Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about loss of biodiversity. Live and let live. Here our theme is to discuss what are the causes and consequences of loss of biodiversity and which kind of species are getting endangered and extinct and what is their role in ecosystem. So today we'll discuss about biodiversity because before starting this topic we should know in detail what is biodiversity, what is its importance, interdependence of different species on each other, we will talk about marine ecosystem, importance of top carnivores in the ecosystem, intervention of humans, lowered biodiversity, loss rate, what is loss rate in the present generation, extinction from human activity, declining amphibian populations, we will talk about reptiles, fish stocks and declining ocean diversity also, loss of forest, long term casts, famous endangered species, factors responsible, extinction, we will talk about various frequently asked questions regarding this topic and what are the probable solutions. So now let's start with what is biodiversity. The variety of life on earth, its biological diversity is commonly referred to as biodiversity. The number of species of plants, animals and microorganisms, the enormous diversity of genes in these species, the different ecosystems on the planet such as deserts, rainforest, coral reefs are all part of a biological diverse earth. So this is what constitutes biodiversity. So appropriate conservation and sustainable development strategies attempt to recognize this as being integral to any approach to preserving biodiversity. Almost all cultures have their roots in our biological diversity in some way or form. So I hope now what is biodiversity? It is clear to you. All the diverse species you see around yourself constitute biodiversity. If we talk in more detail, this biodiversity, it refers to variety and variability of life on earth. Biodiversity is typically a measure of variation at genetic level, at species level, at ecosystem level. If we talk about terrestrial biodiversity, it is usually greater near the equator, which is the result of the warm climate and high primary productivity. There you can see lot of diversity in plants and, and in animals. Biodiversity is not distributed evenly on earth and is richest in the tropical areas. These tropical forest ecosystems cover less than 10% of earth's surface and contain about 90% of world species. And here why we will focus more on marine biodiversity because marine biodiversity is usually highest along coast in the western pacific where sea surface temperature is highest and in the mid latitudinal band in all oceans. So if we talk about distribution. Biodiversity is not evenly distributed as I told you, rather it varies greatly across the globe as well as within regions. Among other factors, the diversity of living organisms constitute your biota. It depends upon temperature, precipitation, altitude, soils, geography and the presence of other species. The study of the spatial distribution of organisms, species and ecosystem is the science of biogeography. Now let's move what is the importance of biodiversity in the ecosystem on this globe. See biodiversity boosts ecosystem productivity where each species no matter how small all have an important role to play. For example, a large number of plant species means a greater variety of crops. Greater species diversity ensures natural sustainability for all life forms. Healthy ecosystems can better withstand and recover from a variety of disasters. And so while we dominate this planet, we still need to preserve the diversity in the wildlife because a healthy biodiversity, it offers you many natural services. A healthy biodiversity provides a number of natural services for everyone. 
now you want to know what kind of services this biodiversity provides you see ecosystem services such as protection of water resources soils formation and protection nutrient storage and recycling pollution breakdown and absorption contribution to climate stability maintenance of ecosystems recovery from unpredictable events and biological sources such as food is provided to you medicinal resources are there wood products ornamental plants breeding stocks and population reservoirs future resources and even your diversity in the genes and species and ecosystems and there are many social benefits such as research is there education and monitoring is there recreation and tourism is there cultural value is there so you see there is lot of importance of biodiversity in your day to day life that is quite a lot of service we get for free the cost of replacing these if possible would be extremely expensive it therefore makes economic and development sense to move towards sustainability even a report from nature magazine also explains the genetic diversity helps to prevent the chances of extinction in wild and even we see interdependence of species on each other while there might be survival of the fittest within a given species each species depend on services provided by other species to ensure survival it is a type of cooperation based on mutual survival and is often what a balanced ecosystem refers to for example this kind of interdependence you can see in the nitrogen cycle where soil bacteria plants all these interact and interdepend upon each other in the nitrogen cycle the relationship between soil plants bacteria and other life is also referred to as nitrogen cycle here you can see plants are involved nitrogen fixation is being taken place by the bacteria which is present in the root nodules of the legumes then soil bacteria is also playing a role in nitrogen fixation so this is the one example of interdependence of species on each other and even you can see another example where species of animals and organisms involved in a simple field see scientists and activists they goes on to detail the cost associated with destroying this natural diversity as you can see from the recent example lot of biodiversity loss is taking place so the traditional farming techniques which recognize this and replacing this with industrial processes which go against the nature of diversity sustainability so for example crop by products feed cattle cattle waste feeds the soil that nourishes the crops it is a whole cycle crops as well as yielding grain also yield straw this straw provides organic matter and fodder crops are there for food sources for humans and animals so again i repeat there are crop by products then there is cattle waste which feeds the soil that nourish the crops then these crops as well as yielding grain also yield straw this straw provides organic matter and fodder crops are there for food resources for humans and animals so soil organisms also benefit from crops how see bacteria feed on the cellulose fibers of straw that farmers return to the soil so bacteria is getting the benefit now amoebas feed on bacteria making lignite fibers available available for uptake by plants then algae provide organic matter and serve as natural nitrogen fixers so then your amoebas are involved then your algae is involved then your rodents like rodents that go under the fields aerate the soil and improve the water holding capacity then there are spiders these spiders centipedes and insects grind organic matter from the surface soil and leave behind enriched droppings then there are earthworms earthworms contribute to soil fertility they provide aerage drainage and maintain soil structure according to charles darwin it may be doubted whether there are many other animals which have played so important a part in the history of creatures the earthworm is like a natural tractor 
fertilizer factory and dam combined so industrial farming techniques would deprive these diverse species of food sources and instead assault them with chemicals destroying the rich biodiversity in the soil with it the basis of the renewal of the soil fertility so now you understand how important the biodiversity is for each and every species that is present on the earth now coming to bees they are crucial agricultural workers bees provide enormous benefits for human kind it is an another example they are crucial agricultural workers as reported by cnn may 5 2001/3 of all our food fruits and vegetables would not exist without pollinators visiting the flowers so bees are the pollinators bees are very vital to biodiversity there are around 1 lakh 30000 plants for example for which bees are essential to pollination from melons to pumpkins raspberries and all kind of fruit trees as well as animal fodder like clover bees are more important than poultry in terms of human nutrition even researchers are finding reasons for the massive decline hard to pinpoint but suspect a combination of various diseases environmental pollution environmental degradation leading to less diversity for bees to feed from for example and farming practices such as pesticides large monoculture cropping so the population of bees is decreasing and it will impact the ecosystem overall the link and dependency between plants bees and human agriculture is so crucial the two scientists writing up years of research into the problem summarized with this warning they said human kind needs to act quickly to ensure that the ancient pact between flowers and pollinators stay intact to safeguard our food supply and to protect our environment for generations to come these efforts will ensure that bees continue to provide pollination and that our diets remain rich in the fruits and vegetables we now take for granted next is your marine ecosystem so it note it is noted that how a few decades ago some fishermen campaigned for killing whales because they were threatening the fish supply and thus their jobs so an example from the seas originally it was uh, mentioned in a research paper uh, basically it was described by national geographic wild in program called a life among whales so it is noted that how a few decades ago some fishermen they actually campaigned for killing whales because they were threatening the fish supply and their jobs also and there are chain on chain of events which are included here a chain of events eventually came full circle and led to a loss of jobs so the first point here is the massive reduction in the local whale population meant killer whales in the region usually they were preying on younger whales moved to other animals such as seals so whales become predators they are predators but they started eating the younger whales also and then they shifted to seals a seal numbers declined so whales are also declining because they are eating their young ones then the seal numbers was also declining the killer whales targeted otters also so otters their number also started declining and otter numbers were declined the urchins and other targets of otters flourished so when otters as they feed upon urchins so when otters number started declining the population of urchins and other targets of otters their population started increasing these decimated the kelp forest where many fish larva grew in relative protection so the exposed fish larva were easy pickings for variety of sea life the fishermen's livelihood were destroyed so you see there were chain of events here so if there is something goes wrong at one level it will ultimately affect the whole circle the whole food chain and the food web so this is about the marine ecosystem how the biodiversity start degrading now let's talk about importance of carnivores because 
लार्ज कार्निवोर्स आर वेरी एसेंशियल फॉर हेल्दी इको सिस्टम्स लार्ज कार्निवोर्स एसेंशियल फॉर हेल्दी इको सिस्टम थ्री क्वार्टर्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बिग कार्निवोर्स आर इन डिक्लाइन अ स्टडी इन द जर्नल साइंस नोट्स दैट दीज लार्ज एनिमल्स सच एज लायंस लेपर्ड्स वोल्वस एंड बियर्स आर इन डिक्लाइन ड्यू टू डिक्लाइनिंग हैबिटैट्स देयर हैबिटैट्स आर डिक्लाइनिंग एंड परसिक्यूशन बाय ह्यूमंस बिकॉज वी कैन सी अ मैन एंड animal conflict at various places so this also has a negative impact on the environment perhaps partly formed by outdated views that predators are harmful for other wildlife so this is an outdated view predators are important there is an importance of the carnivores also as simple example the loss of large carnivore may mean in the short term the herbivores they prey on may increase in numbers but this can also result in a degradation of the environment as the herbivores can graze more largely unchecked so human interv intervention to perform the same services would be more costly and unhealthy for the environment so now talking about the intervention of humans or interdependency versus human intervention see nature can often be surprisingly resilient often without the need of human interventions for example a documentary aired on bbc described two national parks in africa where elephant population had grown quite large within those artificial boundaries the usual way to deal with this was to cull the population to try and keep the ecosystem in balance without this elephants were stripping vegetation bare and affecting other animals too so then what happened there was a scientist who pleaded with the park management not to cull and let nature take its course so being against prevailing thought they would not agree in the end they agreed to let one park have its elephant culled while the other would be left alone a few years later they found the park with the culled population had remained in poor condition the park where things were left alone has naturally regenerated the large elephant populations eventually reduced in number as they undermined their own resource base the natural pace at which this happened allowed vegetation to grow back other wildlife grew in numbers and the ecosystem was generally back in balance so this is a beautiful example of interdependency versus human intervention now we will talk about lowered biodiversity even though permanent global species loss is more dramatic phenomena than regional changes in species composition even minor changes from a healthy stable state can have dramatic influence on the food web and the food chain also so far as it reduces not only one species it can adversely affect the entire chain that is co extinction leading to an overall reduction in biodiversity so just see biodiversity loss is the extinction of species so extinction of species does not mean only plants it could be animals birds uh, birds or plants worldwide and also the local reduction or loss of species in a certain habitat the latter phenomena can be temporary or permanent depending on whether the environmental degradation that leads to the loss is reversible through ecological restoration ecological resilience or effectively permanent through land loss global extinction has so far been proven to be irreversible reduced biodiversity in particular leads to reduced ecosystem services and eventually poses an immediate danger for food security and also for human kind so now let's talk about the loss rate the current rate of global diversity loss is estimated to be 100 to 1000 times higher than the background extinction rate and expected to still grow in the upcoming years so it is the global diversity rate which is naturally occurring so there is 100 to 1000 times more higher so locally bounded loss rates can be measured using species richness and its variation over time rock counts may not be as ecological relevant as relative to absolute abundances 
As with all diversity measures, it is essential to accurately classify the spatial and temporal scope of the observation. Definitions tend to become less precise as the complexity of the subject increases and associated spatial and temporal scales widen. Biodiversity itself is not a single concept but can be split up into various scales. For example, ecosystem diversity versus habitat diversity. There is nucleotide diversity, genetic diversity, species diversity, phylogenetic uh, diversity. So the question of net loss is confined. Regions is often a matter of debate, but longer observation times are generally thought to be beneficial to loss estimates. But there are extinctions due to human activities also. Despite knowing about biodiversity's importance for a long time, human activity has been causing massive extinctions. As the Environment News Service reported back in August 1999, the current extinction rate is now approaching 1000 times the background rate and may climb to 10,000 times the background rate during the next century. If present trends continue, a loss that would easily equal those of past extinctions. So there was a major report, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, which was released in March 2005. They highlighted a substantial and largely irreversible loss in the diversity of life on Earth with some 10 to 30 percent of mammal, bird and amphibian species threatened with extinction due to human actions. The Worldwide Fund for Nature added the earth is unable to keep up in the struggle to regenerate from the demands we place on it. So International Union for Conservation of Nature that is your IUCN notes that many species are threatened with extinction and in addition a threat of extinction are 1 out of 8 birds, 1 out of 4 mammals, 1 out of 4 cornifers, 1 out of 3 amphibians, 6 out of 7 marine turtles, 75% of genetic diversity of agricultural crops has been lost, 75% of world's fisheries are fully or over exploited, up to 70% of world's known species risk extinction in the global temperatures rise by more than 3.5 degrees Celsius, one third of reef building corals around the world are threatened with extinction, over 350 million people suffer from severe water scarcity. Is this the kind of world we want? We should ask ourselves. After all, it concludes all these lectures, that this course that we are making, it concludes our lives are inextricably linked with biodiversity and ultimately its protection is essential for our very survival. Now next is declining amphibian population. Amphibians are particularly sensitive to changes in environment. Amphibians have been described as a marker species or the equivalent of canaries of the coal mines meaning they provide an important signal to the health of biodiversity when they are stressed and struggling biodiversity may be under pressure when they are doing well biodiversity is probably very healthy but unfortunately, as has been feared for many years now, amphibian species are declining at an alarming rate. If current estimates of amphibian species as imminent danger of extinction are included in this calculation, then the current amphibian extinction rate may range from 25,000 times to 45,000 times the background extinction rate for amphibians. It is difficult to explain this unprecedented and accelerating rate of extinction as a natural phenomena. So if it's not natural, it is somewhere anthropogenic activities are behind them. Next, if we talk about reptiles, the BBC reported on a global scale study published in the General Science that found climate change could wipe out 25, 20% uh, 20 of world's lizard species by 2080. Global projection models used by the scientists suggested that lizards have already crossed a threshold for extinctions caused by climatic change. 
The fear of low land species moving to higher elevations has long been predicted as an effect of climate change. This has been observed with lizard population too as a leader of research team told to various channels. Why are lizards so sensitive to climatic change? Lizards, the researchers say, are far more susceptible to climate warming extinction than previously thought. Many species live right at the edge of their thermal limits. Rising temperatures, they explained, leave lizards unable to spend sufficient time foraging for food as they have to rest and regulate their body temperature. So, if we talk more generally, 19% of world's reptiles are estimated to be threatened with extinction according to a study by IUCN and Zoological Society of London. Rep reptiles include species such as snakes, lizards, crocodiles, turtles and even your tortoises. So, this study noted that extinction risk is not evenly spread. For example, the study estimated 30% of freshwater reptiles to be close to extinction. Freshwater turtles alone are at 50% risk of extinction as they are also affected by national and international trade. So why are reptiles so sensitive to environment condition? Reptiles are often associated with extreme habitats and tough environmental condition. So it is easy to assume that they will be fine in our changing world. However, many species are very highly specialized in terms of habitat use and the climatic condition they require for day-to-day -day functioning. This makes them particularly very sensitive to environmental changes. So this is about reptiles. Now, We'll talk about few fish stocks. Fish catches are expected to decline dramatically in world's tropical regions because of climatic change. Furthermore, in 2006, aquaculture consumed 57% of fish meal, 87% of fish oil as industrial fisheries operating in tropical regions have been scooping up enormous amounts of fish. This has resulted in higher prices for fish hitting the poorest the most. So another report, UN's third global biodiversity outlook report, they have man mentioned earlier about 80% of world marine fish stocks for which assessment information is available are fully exploited or over exploited. And at current rate of loss, it is feared that oceans may never recover again. Extensive coastal pollution, climate change, overfishing and enormously wasteful practice of deep sea trawling are all contributing to the problem. As also explained on this about biodiversity importance, like we discussed, ecosystems are incredibly productive and efficient when there is sufficient biodiversity. Each form of life works together with the surrounding environment to help recycle waste, maintain the ecosystem and provide services that others including humans use and benefit from. For example, Steve Polumby of Stanford University, they have noted on their research work the ocean ecosystems can take sewage and recycle it into nutrients, scrub toxins out of water, produce food for many species including humans, turns carbon dioxide into food and oxygen. With massive species loss at current rates in less than 50 years, the ecosystems could reach the point of no return where they would not be able to regenerate themselves. And this sounds really scary. So overall, we are watching declining ocean biodiversity. It is not just fish in the oceans that may be struggling, but most life in the seas. This includes mammals also, whales, dolphins, polar bears, birds, penguins and other creatures often, for example, krill also. So ocean degradation has been feared to be faster than previously thought. For example, now if we talk about sharks, an estimated 100 million Sharks are being killed each year according to the General Marine Policy which published a report in 2013. Representing the most accurate assessment to date, millions are killed from overfishing and trade. Many die accidentally in fishing nets set for tuna and swordfish while others are caught for their meat or just for their fins. 
sharks are known as the apex predator of the seas that is because in general sharks are at the top of the food chain without sufficient shark numbers the balance they provide to the ecosystem is threatened because nature evolved this balance through many millennia and even here the additional concern is that many of the most threatened species are slow to reproduce so their populations cannot keep up with the rate they are being need lessly killed another effect of overfishing has been the rise in illegal fishing but even legal high tech fishing has caused other social pro problems poor fishermen are being affected other factors which are affecting oceans health they include deoxygenation acidification and warming these impacts will have cascading consequences for marine biology including altered food web dynamics and the expansion of pathogens the senses of marine life in a global network of researchers and scientists they have been involved in a decade long initiative to access diversity distribution and abundance of life in oceans a better understanding of these complex systems is clearly important given our dependence on the marine ecosystem in various way now we already talk about whale like when whale becomes the apex predator and even starts feeding on its younger ones it ultimately affects the human population and their jobs also and various biodiversity in the oceans now some have argued that whale hunting as a way to sustain other marine populations they noted that how a few decades ago some fishermen campaigned for killing whales as we already discussed so this is the whole chain that how whale can affect the biodiversity marine biodiversity now talking about inland water ecosystems we use water for a variety of purpose from agricultural domestic and industrial uses this has involved activities that alter surrounding ecosystems such as drainage diversion of water for irrigation industrial and domestic use contaminating water with excess nutrient runoff and industrial waste building dams etc the un's third global biodiversity outlook report also mentioned earlier notes that shallow water wetlands such as marshes swamps and shallow lakes have declined significantly in many parts of the world so what they noted between 56% to 65% of inland water systems are suitable for use in intensive agriculture in Europe and North America has been drained by 1985 73% of marshes in northern Greece have been drained since 1930 60% of original wetland area of Spain has been lost so you can see lot of loss in biodiversity in various places now see loss of forest equates to a loss of many species a 20 year study has shown that deforestation and introduction of non native species basically majorly they start becoming invasive also that is why they are non native they have led to about 12.5% of world's plant species to become critically rare and here we are talking about the amazon forest also amazon damage has taken place and is worse than previously thought what also makes this a problem is that many of the endangered species are only found in small areas of land often with the borders of a single country new species of animals and plants are still being discovered for example in papua new guinea 44 new species of animals were discovered recently in the forest logging may affect these animals habitats though the loss of rainforest around the world where many species of life are found will mean that potential knowledge whether medicinal sustenance sources or evolutionary and scientific information etc could be lost even if we talk about brazil which is estimated to have around 55000 species of flora and amounting to some of 22% of world's total and india for example which has about 46000 and some 81000 species of animal species 46000 and 81000 animal species are also under various pressures from corporate globalization deforestation etc so too are many other biodiverse regions such as indonesia parts of africa and other tropical regions
because then we can see lot of illegal timber trade on large scale legal timber trade on a large scale people and forest the connection between them is causing loss of biodiversity see here i would like to add for the people and forest quite often we make blanket statements or generalize conclusion that people are the cause for deforestation while that is true unfortunately all people around the world are not equal and it also follows that some are more responsible for deforestation than others often in forests of the amazon uh, africa or asia forest protection schemes have been promoted that go against indigenous peoples and cultures rather than work with them yet because of blanket conclusions that human kind is responsible for deforestation we risk assuming all types of societies are equally responsible for deforestation that is damaging the environment so if we go what are the long term costs of such loss if ecosystem deteriorates to an unsustainable level then the problems resulting can be very expensive economically to reverse For example in Bangladesh and India for example logging of trees and forest means that the floods during the monsoon seasons can be very deadly similarly many avalanches and mud slides in many regions around the world that have claimed many lives may have been made worse by the clearing of so many forests which provide a natural barrier that can take the brunt of such forces even vanishing coral reefs forest and other ecosystem can all take their troll and even make effects of some natural events even go worse so if we take an example here the and assuming a somewhat alarmist scenario if enough trees and forest and related ecosystem they vanish then number 1 oxygen producing benefits from such ecosystems is threatened the atmosphere would suffer from more pollution the cost to tackle this and the related illness problems and other cascading effects would be enormous furthermore other species in the ecosystem that would depend on this would be further at a risk as well which would lead to downward spiral of the ecosystem so now iucn has given various category there are different terms extinct that means a species become extinct when the last existing member of that family dies extinct in wild undoubtedly the last member has died but the captive member endures critically endangered means the critically endangered species face an extremely high risk of extinction in the immediate future endangered endangered species are the species which faces a high risk of extinction in the near future vulnerable the vulnerable species facing the risk of extinction in the term medium term future near threatened least concern data deficient not evaluated like not assessed against criteria so these are the various criterias given by the iucn now we will talk about most famous endangered species so what are endangered the endangered species are the species which faces high risk of extinction in the near future so see first is your giant panda everyone loves panda they might be the most cutest animal humanity has even driven to brink of extinction their status is still tenuous though their range is fragmented and they are still subject to disease occasional predation and starvation when large swaths of the bamboo on which they feed completes its life cycle and dies next is your tiger In 2014 China explicitly outlawed the consumption of endangered species including tigers whose bones and other organs are superstitiously believed to have magical curative powers slash and burn agriculture along with logging and human encroachment have hugely diminished the habitat available to these tigers which require extensive ranges capable of supporting the large herbivores that constitute the bulk of their diets poaching for trophies and body parts used in asian medicine is though is thought to pose the greatest threat to tigers next is your whooping crane in 1938 first year a population survey was conducted only 29 whooping cranes remain in the wild 3 years later only 16 were left hunting and reduction of their wetland habitat had violated 
the population and concentrated the efforts to salvage remnant birds did not being until the late 1960s the only self sustaining population migrates between alberta canada and texas that is in us then is your blue whale there are fewer than 25000 blue whales the largest animals on the planet compromising several subspecies blue whales are found in all the world oceans save the arctic the current population is thought to have been reduced by up to 90% by whaling in the 20th century commercial hunting of the species were ultimately banned in 1966 the national marine fisheries service of us spelled out a recovery plan in 1998 It stipulated the maintenance of photo databases of individual specimens and the collection of genetic and migration data in order to better understand the species which remains at risk from ship collisions and entanglement in the fishing nets. Next is your Asian elephant. IUCN's best guess on the current population of Asian elephants which inhabit in 13 countries. is around 40000 to 50000 that number may be far inaccessible due to the terrain or the political volatility over 50% of the population is concentrated in india the human population there and elsewhere in asia creates conflicts for space and resources and while the tusks of asian elephants are much smaller than those of their african counterparts the asian species are still poached for its ivory meat and skin next is your sea otter The luxurious waterproof coat that insulates sea otters from the chilly waters that they inhabit almost led to its extinction. A target of the commercial fur trade, the species were almost wiped out with only some 2000 of an estimated 2 3 lakh left by 9, 1911. So in 1911 from 3 lakh species only 2000 were left. though that the ban along with the management and conservation measures taken in the wake in 1972 marine mammal protection act have helped populations recover to perhaps third of their earlier numbers they are highly vulnerable to both natural phenomena such as killer whale predation and to anthropogenic factors such as oil spills next is your snow leopard though it is called a leopard and certainly resembles a frosted version of those spotted habitats of more equatorial regions the snow leopard is actually more closely related to the tiger at least per genetic analysis probably fewer than 6500 remain in the wild though due to the remote mountainous terrain preferred by the species and its elusive nature data is hard to come by poaching still constitutes a major threat to the species as does over hunting of its natural prey species then your gorilla depending on who you ask there are either two species of gorilla the eastern and the western or the three subspecies also the eastern lowland and western lowland and the mountain gorillas regardless of who you ask all gorillas are endangered there are probably only around 2 lakh 20000 left in the wild habitat encroachment and poaching for bush meat trophies and magical talisman have led to substantial losses Next is your Tasmanian devil. Between 1996 to 2008, the population of Tasmanian devils dropped some by 60% due to a contagious cancer known as devil facial tumor disease. It continues to decimate population of the species which only occurs in Australian island of Tasmania. There are only around 10,000 wild individuals remaining. Captive breeding of uninfected individual has been instituted and efforts have been made to develop a vaccine for the cancer which is thought to have stemmed from mutated cells from a single specimen. And last is your orangutan. Orangutan is Malaysian for person of the forest. Though morphologically they may resemble melted mupets more than people, their sophisticated cognitive abilities are very human indeed. Like gorillas and chimpanzees, they have been known to use tools due in large part to logging and capture of the exotic pet trait organ Orangutans restricted to Southeast Asian islands of Borneo and Sumatra number fewer than 60000 per a 2004 study unlike other great apes they are usually solitary or live in groups or fewer than 3 making them difficult to track and study 
So to conclude, the major factors for this biotic stress and the loss of biodiversity are like habitat loss, climatic change, excessive nutrient load, overexploitation, even the armed conflicts and invasive alien species. We will discuss them again. We will relate them to biodiversity loss in our upcoming lectures. So now if we talk about solutions, so conservation biologists, they have noted that these problems could be solved using a mix of public policy and economic solution assisted by continued monitoring and education. Governments, non-governmental organization and the scientific community must work together to create incentives to conserve natural habitats and protect the species within them from unnecessary harvesting while disincentivizing behavior that contributes to habitat loss and degradation. Developing and implementing such kind of solutions for each of these causes of biodiversity loss will relieve the pressure on species and ecosystem in their own way. But conservation biologists also agree that most effective way to prevent continued biodiversity loss is to protect the remaining species from overhunting and overfishing and to keep their habitats and the ecosystem they rely on intact and secure from species invasions and land and use conversion in the comment box you can tell us about more solution also so this is all about today's lecture thank you